are saying that uh, they, they hide their munitions, their rockets and militant leaders in civilian buildings. But in the end, the Israelis have not stopped the rockets coming in and more Palestinians have died. I mean, anyone interested in bringing peace to the region has to bear in mind the very serious learning curve that the Israelis went through when, after the withdrawal from Gaza in 2005, they got not peace from Gaza but rocket fire, thousands and thousands of rockets. So what they've been trying to do since is to stop the rocket fire. And as I say, in, since 2007, and Hamas uh, did a coup, a military coup in the Gaza and killed their fellow Palestinians from Fatah and other parties, the Israelis have, on three major occasions now, gone in. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Guys, I'm going to be reacting to Douglas Murray on BBC Daily Politics debating Israel Hamas fighting. Guys, let's go straight into this. Well, I'm joined now by Douglas Murray of the think tank, the Henry Jackson Society, and by the Labour MP, Rushanara Ali. Welcome to both of you. Rushanara Ali, is there anything, realistically, that the West, the European Union, the British government can actually do to solve this conflict? Well, we need the European Union and including the British government to work together uh, to show leadership and also to act as an honest broker. And what we've seen yet again is that Israel has shown complete disregard for humanitarian issues. Um, some 600 people are now dead, mainly civilians, uh, 100,000 seeking refuge. And we need the European Union to be a strong voice in recognizing, of course, Israel needs to maintain its security but its reaction and response is not proportionate and we need the European Union including the British government to speak up uh, and work towards res resuming peace negotiations which have been completely elusive over recent years. How does Israel maintain its security without this sort of violence that escalates? Well, this sort of violence and the uh, death of so many people, particularly Palestinians, of course there have been casualties on the Israeli side as well, but the vast majority have been uh, Palestinians, um, won't secure Israel, uh, won't provide long-term security. What we need is the international community to work together. But also, Israel needs to respect international humanitarian law, international law generally, and that's not happening. Has Israel disregarded um, humanitarian and international law by going into Gaza in the way they have? No, not at all. Um, apart from anything else, the uh, very muted response, and indeed in many cases a very encouraging response for Israel from the international community, is I think testament to the fact that it is playing not just by the rules, but by the most stringent rules imaginable. The reason why uh, the casualties exist in the Gaza is obviously because Israel is trying as an operational objective to stop Hamas and other jihadist groups from firing rockets mm. into Israel. In order to do that, Israel is carrying out a very, very targeted campaign. Now, it is inevitable in that that, that civilians are going to be killed as well. And one of the reasons has, why that is happening, it, excuse me, if I just finish, one of the reasons why that's, it's targeted, because they are trying to get the launch pads for the, from the, that the rockets are coming from. Now, one of the reasons why there is a problem from this, of course, killed. is that Hamas has, and incidentally CNN has the tape of this, among others, uh, has been encouraging the people of Gaza to, quote, protect the houses of Hamas commanders, to actually congregate around areas which the Israelis have dropped leaflets and texted civilians to say this area is going to be hit. Hamas has actually tried to maximize the casualties. So that's the first point. As for how this is to be stopped, I think there's a very important thing that we do not, in, in the international community does not simply perpetuate this conflict mm -hmm. in trying to stop Israel from achieving the operational objective of stopping the rocket fire. The it, international, right. this, is how, this is the third All time right. now that this has happened. Well, and I would suggest... It's more than the that, third time, no, actually. The third there time has been, been this exchange since 2007. Right. OK. I mean, we'll look at the operational and, and, and what actually both sides are hoping to achieve. But, Rajan Ayala, you told a demonstration at the weekend that David Cameron had failed to show international leadership. My party is with you and the Labour Friends of Palestine are with you. Um, do you have Ed Miliband's support for your line on this conflict? Well, Ed Miliband has made it absolutely clear that uh, the, the incursion, the ground incursion, he said this only yesterday uh, as well, the ground incursion is not uh, one that is supported. Uh, we recognize Israel's uh, uh, demand, as Ed Miliband has said, to um, uh, for its security, but its response has been disproportionate. Yeah, could, and the point about international leadership is if you look at what David Cameron said in 2010, he described the blockade of Gaza as an open prison. Uh, Gazan people are suffering. Uh, and what there seems to be but a collective is that the fault amnesia. Of, Hamas as well as is, uh, of course, these groups, the point is that the public 
the public, you know, Palestinians are suffering, and the international community has a responsibility to respond to right. the needs of those people. I must just ask you, uh, Douglas Murray, on, on the issue of operations, the last 10 years there have been a series of ground and air operations by the Israeli Defense Forces on Hamas, um, and there are at least half a dozen of these. The rockets still continue yes. to come yes. into Israel. So the argument could be, are these Palestinians, innocent Palestinian civilians, losing their lives for nothing? The Israelis are not achieving their aims. The rockets continue from Hamas, and, all right, you are saying that uh, they, they hide their munitions, their rockets, and militant leaders in civilian buildings. But in the end, the Israelis have not stopped the rockets coming in, and more Palestinians are dying. I mean, anyone interested in bringing peace to the region has to bear in mind the very serious learning curve that the Israelis went through when, after the withdrawal from Gaza in 2005, they got not peace from Gaza, but rocket fire, thousands and thousands of rockets. So what they've been trying to do since is to stop the rocket fire. And as I say, in, since 2007, and Hamas uh, did a coup, a military coup in the Gaza, and killed their fellow Palestinians from Fatah and other parties, the Israelis have, on three major occasions now, gone in. Now, the problem with this is that the international community tends to allow Israel some weeks in order to achieve the operational objective. Mm. They're and going then, to lose then, international support, exactly. aren't they, now, the, Israel? The, and the crucial thing, just to add on this, is it is very important that Israel is allowed to win at some point. The international community is quite good at prolonging mm. the conflict precisely by All not right. allowing Israel to achieve what its operational objective. What does objective. a win look like in, in this case? I mean, can there ever be a military solution to this problem of particularly Gaza and Israel rather than the West Bank and Israel? It's a platitude, but it happens to be true here. There are going to be no winners here, whatever the outcome. Uh, I think that, you know, <laughs> if I can speak personally, my, my heart is rather with what Rosh Hashanah says. However, I have two caveats. One is, I really dislike the tendency, particularly from the media here, always to put Israel in the dock here. Um, the truth of the matter is that the people of Gaza actually voted for Hamas. Mm -hmm. And they voted knowing what would happen. Hamas has been very clear it has no intention of, of making peace with Israel. So actually, you know, this is a horrible, cruel thing to say. This is a result of a democratic outcome. And by the way, the, the, the really bigger issue here is Egypt, because that's what's really made the big difference here. So I think... And the, Egypt the, is, worry also, is also worried about being well, on the, the border the, with the, Gaza. The peculiar thing is, Israel and Egypt, relative to Gaza, are in exactly the same position mm. right now. Yes. So I think that the, the notion of the way that we tend to report this, which is, it's Israel, versus mm. suffering mm. Palestinians. Mm. It's just not right. That's right. not what this is about. I mean, Rishonara Ali, what is it that Hamas wants to achieve? I mean, what is it? I mean, Trevor Phillips says that people voted for Hamas as opposed to Fatah, to the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. They voted for Hamas knowing that they would be much more hardline. So what is it that they want? I hope what Trevor's not saying is that by voting for Hamas, those who voted were um, in some way uh, are now uh, deserve or you know the punishment collective punishment that is now being espoused let me finish let me finish but the, but the, the, it's not, not it's, I, hope, I, hope, I very much hope not but the, the point is that this is this cycle of violence is going on and on uh, the fact is that the Palestinians have lived under occupation and Gaza They're not uh, under has occupation been, they, they have they, their own they state are, they have, the Gaza that's nonsense. Is, is a state that's nonsense. and it is and run by Hamas and they had one election the point which, as is Trevor the people, said, the people the, voted for Hamas. Stop. Hamas then killed the other, the opposition, and they've never had an election right. since. But they could have a state. So let's if have, they wanted let, a state, they could have let's, a state. Let Rishnara finish her point. You're saying that they are living the under is, occupation. There seems to be a bit, of an, a bit of amnesia here about the history of what's happening in that region and the fact that Palestinians don't have a state. They have you know, lived under occupation. They've lived under attack. And what we need is rapidly, uh, in order to secure peace, uh, which is rapidly eluding uh, uh, this well, region. We, ha we need the international community. We need leaders uh, in America and to European Union to work together precisely? to resume negotiations and to, first of all, bring an end to this conflict. Well, and that's the, end the, conf the end of the conflict will be fastest brought about day. by Hamas being thrown out of the West Bank by the Palestinians of the West Bank mm -hmm. or by any other force uh, available. We've got to remember this. The two-state solution, such as it is, and it's a dream, but it's still a possible dream if you talk about the West Do Bank. The Israelis 
believe in that. Yes, I think they do. With the West Bank, the thing that is a problem and is an irreconcilable problem at the moment is what you do with Hamas, which wants to annihilate the Jewish state and does not want peace. That is a problem. The real problem here is the agenda is now being controlled by people who don't want peace, whether it is the settlers on West Bank or right. it's Hamas. That's, right. That's, That's the problem. Absolutely. How do we wrest the agenda do out of the hands of those groups of people who, yeah. by the way, yeah. are not states? Yeah. These are gangs. Mm. Sure. Let's, and unfortunately, Gaza is run by a gang. Let's, let's leave it there. Said. Thank you both very much. Thank Let you. me say this the way I think Zach and I said it. Let the little suffer for, let the minority suffer for the majority to enjoy. I think that is what Hamas is trying to do. To, Zach and I said it in a form of because a child was crying, so it was like, take a child outside, so your child is a minority, like, it's you and him that are going to disturb the whole conference. So, I think that is what Hamas is trying to do. Them making, them using people as blockade, because that is how it is. You cannot fire rockets at Israel and expect, I don't expect a reaction. So, they're using those people as blockade as, we are fighting this war, even if you have to die for like, when we conquer, like, it's going to help the majority and we're going to take over everything. But like, I believe that you should think about it. In this life, I honestly believe that even to a plan has this mentality that what if it doesn't work? Like, look at lives that have died and stuff like that. So, this would, what she said was actually correct. What the lady said, that like, a good meeting will solve this. And this is a fact. Like everyone knows this. I just a good meeting we just solve this whole thing and everyone will be at peace for a while though. Before something comes up like everyone will be at peace for a while. So I just believe that a good meeting should just take place so that a lot of people can actually leave because I feel a lot of people are just collateral damage. You know that they have no intent to fight in the war. They're just dying because they're just caught up in this. And people who are actually doing this are running away, like it's heartbreaking and annoying. Well, I don't want to think about this, so you should like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys.